Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneur Spotlight series. And this time I am thrilled to bring on Jessica Nicasio. She owns and runs JNL Media Co., which is a, we a Squarespace website design and branding studio, and she works with uh, female entrepreneurs. I had a consulting session with her a little while ago on my own website strategy. Um, so it was such a great experience and she's such a sweet, kind-hearted and an extremely professional and knowledgeable person that I had to bring her on this episode. First of all, thank you for having me here. It's really an honor. I'm super excited. But yeah, so like you said, my name is Jessica and I started my business um, about two years after I graduated college. So I graduated college in 2016 I'm from San Diego State. Um, so I live here in San Diego. And uh, when I graduated, I actually went straight to corporate, but I just was finding that was not fulfilling for me. I had moved to a different city, just wasn't doing what I wanted to be doing. So I started my business back in 2018 last year and I do Squarespace web design and branding for female entrepreneurs. So I always knew I wanted to start a business. I just really didn't know how. So I took some courses, um, how to start a service-based business for a millennial woman. So that that's kind of how I just got started. They really gave me that foundation of how to price myself, what services to offer. And really that's all I really needed, that guidance in order to start. So it's been um, a year last month that uh, I've been in business. Yeah, it was on March 19th was my one year anniversary. So what I do is I help female entrepreneurs gain credibility online because, um, you know, there's so many people doing different business, the same business out there. Like, how do you stand out? And I really help them build that online hub, that online home in order for them to show up confidently because when you have an online home that you can send people to you show up differently online so that's what I do for um you know for my business my niche niche <laughs> uh, is uh, female entrepreneurs yeah okay in the okay. service based business so like business coaches I especially work with coaches so business coaches life coaches health coaches, mm -hmm. business coaches. yeah mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I know in our conversations uh, from the past, you have been like, and you said that you always knew that you wanted to be an entrepreneur kind of thing. And you were actually, uh, even before you realized, even in school that, you know, yeah. you, you had that entrepreneurial spirit. So, um, yeah. so what were you kind of, what were you thinking when you were a kid? Like, did you, did you know back then that you wanted to be an entrepreneur, like right at that time? Or did it grow over a period? I feel like that word is just starting to gain notice, um, you know, in the last couple of years. So I don't think, so what you're referring to is basically like back when I was little, I used to sell in the swap meet with my parents. Yes. I used to sell um, Mexican candy um, from my backpack in, high, in middle school. Um, I also used to sell like just random stuff. I just, you yes. know, trying to make money. I used to sell um, my lunch at school. So I would get lunch from... Uh, cafeteria yeah. and like part of a program and stuff and I wouldn't want to eat it so I would sell that for a little bit less and get use that money to buy um some of the like oh my goodness bad, wow. like, the and like the bad things that you needed to pay for so I used yeah. to do that too so I, I don't want to say like knew I was an entrepreneur just like you know it was just right it was fun and, you found it fun yeah I found it fun and then uh when I graduated I mean when I was trying to you know about to graduate didn't know what yeah. to do the only jobs, to be honest, I could find were like entry level sales jobs. And I was like, okay, so I, I owe a little bit of money for school. I don't really have a lot of money in the bank. Should I start my entrepreneurship journey or should I go corporate and get experience? So I am glad I did. I went that route because it gave me time to really figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it just always was in me. I just didn't really know how to actually start, which is. I think the hardest part uh -huh. <laughs> and I have to be naive now looking back I was like oh my god I was so naive when I started my business like I thought like I was going to be matching my corporate income in like four months and I, it's not the case but you know you learn a lot during the journey and that's what's important yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and um to what you said to the point you mentioned about um 
you know, starting when you start, like you don't know exactly, you know, where to start, how to start, um, what you should be offering, et cetera. How like, did, were they, I know you uh, invested a lot in programs and um, stuff like that and learning about, you know, business and starting. Um, are there some uh, specific tools and techniques that you used to maybe get clear on how you, like what you wanted to do and how you wanted to start? Yeah, so I have a business degree in marketing. So I, I did have, so I was lucky that I did have a business background and I had a lot of internships that I did in social media. I did a lot of social media management, content creation. I, I built a WordPress blog. So I had dabbled in it. Um, but in terms of like what got me started, I really think it was that course that gave me a foundation in terms of like how, because I knew I had all these skills, but it's like what, like, you know, there's so many businesses you could start. You could be a business coach. You could be an SEO expert. You can be like a brandy. You could do web design. You can do so many things. So many um, things yeah. uh, the, so I knew that with my background, I liked social media management, but I didn't want to do social media management. So I knew I wanted to do something in terms of like marketing, um, like something business related because that was what my background was and what I was passionate about. So this course is what gave me the tools because there was basically the course is um, two routes you can go. You can do a tech or design I and see. I chose to do the design route. And like I mentioned to you, um, I think during our conversation that one of the first reasons I started my business was to be location independent. Yes. And I was just like, this seems like, it, like I said earlier too, I was like naive. I was like, oh, let me start this business. Like, I don't know, like, you know, I'm this 24, 23 year old, like, let me just start this business. And I didn't really know too much about design. I learned everything by doing their, um, like their projects, doing a lot of uh, courses, uh, uh, like additional courses and stuff like that. So I think um, the course I took, which was the Bucket List Bombshells, really gave me that foundation. But of course, there's like Skillshare, there's Linda.com, there's Udemy. Um, also, I did free websites. Uh, when I started, I did two free websites um, and just got practice that way because sometimes oh. you learn a lot of the like theory and you can't, you don't, you don't know what you don't know. So right. once you start doing the thing, then you won't learn. And I know there's a lot of like controversy where you should do free. Some people like you have to do free work. Some people like don't ever do that. But I think it really depends on your situation. And then for me, I feel like those two websites that I did, did give me the confidence to start charging for my services and mm -hmm. learning now a year in. Like mm -hmm. I know so much more and can charge more because you know, I've put all this work into it, but it's all like, if I would have been like, Oh, I don't know anything. Like I can't start. Then I would have never have this business. I just, like I said, I was naive. So <laughs> thank God I was. And I just started and it was, it's just all about learning and pra practicing. That's another thing because then you get stuck in being this, um, what's it called consumed with consuming, which uh -huh. that's where I was for a good like year. I just was taking all these courses and yeah. I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And then yeah. you don't do anything. So I think it's, it's a, you know, fine line between doing both. Yeah. Mm, that is a great great point about you know doing it's not about just consuming it's about how you start implementing what you learn because I mean you know we are all great learners but then uh, we're not going to have a business if you don't do something about it so <laughs> uh, yeah so it, yeah. It, sorry go ahead oh no I was just going to say um, I think that comes from being in school mm -hmm. uh, because you know in school you're it's all learning and like especially if you're because I'm like the type a kind of person so I always was you know kind of like straight a like going to all of the um office hours kind of like you know really dirty I guess yeah. so I was so used to having a structure and like at the end of this you know course you learn this you take a test and you get a grade like it's just like that's you're just so used to learning and a lot you know right. this is the real world now you have to actually put it to practice yeah right. so it's and a habit you have to break from books to doing <laughs> Yeah, and that's actually another great point that you made because of the, you know, we are so used to learning in a certain fashion in school that we keep doing it the same way, right? And we think that, you know, if you know that if we have the theory that that's good enough, but it's really not. It's all about mm -hmm. practicing. And I also believe um, in doing free work in the beginning to one is to build your confidence. Second is to build your portfolio, right? If you can't show people what you've done, uh, why would people 
trust you? How would they know the quality of your work? And I, I, I am all about free work mm -hmm. in the beginning. And it also teaches you how yeah. to estimate uh, how much time it's going to take. Because I've heard this from, uh, because I coach a lot of startups, I've heard this a lot from uh, my clients that um, they sometimes underestimate the time uh, it takes to do certain things. And then they don't end up making even minimum wage because they don't know how to yeah. estimate certain jobs. Right. So I think, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. You don't know how long it's going to take you to do certain things until you're Absolutely. doing that. It's right. not going to take me two hours. It took me 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, that, that's the thing. Like that's, that also is a great uh, foundation on which to build your pricing because you know how much time it's going to take. Being a millennial, uh, your ideas, your values are very different from what we have as like old schoolers, right? Did you face any challenges working with different age groups or different backgrounds, etc.? Yeah, I think um, in terms of like challenges, well, going back to like the free work, I think some of the challenge there sometimes when you do offer free work, they don't necessarily appreciate it that much. So I have noticed that the different price points attract different type of um, people. So I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but it is uh -huh, uh -huh. Offering free work. You, you show up differently. So yeah. I think the way they showed up was kind of like taking it for granted. Like, you know, she's yeah. doing this for free. So that was a challenge. Um, but it, it was a learning experience for me because it, it was my two, you know, my first website. So I'm not going to be like, pay me 10 grand when uh -huh. I don't know. But that, that was a challenge, but I want to say it was a really good learning experience. So I don't want to say, like, I regret it or anything like that. Um, but I think also, like, the different price points. So, like, I, I've been, you know, as I get more experience, I do raise my prices and stuff like that. So I do notice it attracts uh, different people at different parts of their business journey. Because, of course, if someone's starting out, they don't necessarily have the money to invest in a designer. And yeah. also I think if you're just starting out and you don't even know if this business is going to work, you probably shouldn't invest in a designer because then you're like, what have you Great not even point. done this in like four months? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's actually you know, why I now offer that website coaching service because now, you know, I can help, I can still help the people that have lower price points yeah. and invest in me. But I think those were some of the challenges, but in terms of like, challenge like as you know and I haven't mentioned this trip in this um interview but I traveled for seven months um last year in 2018 I traveled from July to I got home January 26 so uh, some of the challenges just in itself was like I remember one time I had a I was at a hostel in, in Madrid in Spain and I had a client call and it was just like I don't have Wi-Fi anywhere. Like I have to hop on this wow. call and it's just like trying to get Wi-Fi and like the time difference and um, making sure I gave uh, my client a good client experience, although we were like halfway across the world. So that was um, an interesting seven months and really good learning experience. Um, not just like for my business, but personally, I grew so much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is a great thing about your client experience you mentioned because I had a fantastic client experience with you. Um, you, were, you were really good. You were, you know, I, I mean, that, that is something I also look out for is when I'm working with someone, it is very important for me that uh, that person offers a good client experience, right? Because otherwise, mm -hmm. it, I cannot trust the person, right? If, if the, the experience isn't good, I, I cannot trust the person. It just means that they don't know what they're doing. Right. So I really loved what you did for me. I really, really loved it. So speaking yeah. of which, can you maybe tell us a little bit about what exactly your, you know, you do in your business? Like suppose somebody, um, you know, approaches you, what is the, uh, the service that you offer and how do you go about it? Like, so that people know if they, you know, if they need your service, they can, they, they can get in touch with you because you're fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So the way, like I mentioned earlier, I do Squarespace web design and branding for female entrepreneurs. So I have three different like main offers, which one is my web design, one's web design and branding, and the other one's website coaching. So website coaching is more of it's just like a two hour session where we sit down and we go over your goals, your um, just your business in general. And then also I create a roadmap for your website. That way you know what elements to include in your website. So that's my uh, lower and uh, like a low ticket offer. And then my other two um, offers, it's basically, so if someone needs branding, which most of the time they, they do. So when I say branding, um, branding is more of 
you know, that's a word that's thrown around so much nowadays. So there's, I focus a little bit of the, on the strategy, but more mostly when I, my deliverables are mostly like the branding uh, visuals. So the, you know, the, I say whenever I talk about branding intangible, intangible. So I focus primarily on that tangible aspect. But of course, you can't create the tangible aspect if you don't know a little bit of the strategy. Absolutely. So do a little of that strategy. Mm-hmm. One thing I have noticed um, with my marketing and business background is that a lot of designers are just focusing on having a pretty website and that's pretty much it. Um, When I really do focus on having, yes, of course, pretty website, but also having a strategy behind it and then also how are you going to market it? So there's, I really focus on the branding, the strategy of the site, and then also the digital marketing. Um, How's it going to integrate with the rest of your marketing strategy? Because if it's up there and there's no traffic, I mean, what's the point of having it, right? So how are we going to drive traffic to that website? So yeah, I have my six-week framework for that website and branding, and then I have a five-week framework for um, just web design. Speaking of um, what you mentioned about the tangibles of the branding thing, so are you basically um, also designing logos and everything? Is that what you do as well? Yeah, so when I when I mentioned the tangible, what I mean by that is the branding visuals. So that includes your main logo, your alternative logo, mm-hmm. Fabicon, which is that little icon you see at the mm-hmm. top of the tab. Mm-hmm. Um, also their color palette. So it's a five five color color palette based on the brand research and the Pinterest inspiration board that we have I have them do during their questionnaire. And then also typography. So we have um, their header fonts, we have their um, body fonts and any accent fonts. And then also there's any graphics depending on the industry. You know, sometimes when you go on websites, they have like little branded um, visuals. So it could be, you know, like a little icon or like uh, a pattern, a texture. One of the struggles, and I think it really speaks to every phase, is having that imposter syndrome Uh and it's so basic but it really is it's a mindset thing like if you don't get over it like I I don't think you will ever get over it but I think it's knowing how to manage it so imposter syndrome and then comparing myself to others so I would look at you know this other more established person and they have like you know 100 blogs on their website and I'm just starting out with like two and I'm just like why would someone hire me if they can hire them and I just like didn't feel yes like good enough And it's something I still struggle with. And like, I have to remind myself that they'll work with me because of me and the way I can provide the service for them. It's not necessarily like, you know, like I don't have to compare myself to the other person because we're completely different people and we offer the services and and deliver them in a completely different way. But I still think um, imposter syndrome is, is huge for just anyone in any industry and in any like part of their journey. Like I think I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were like quoting like um jennifer lopez and um all these celebrities that have had so many movies and success and they're like still feeling like an imposter even though like they're 20 years into their career and i'm like okay this is normal i guess like i still hate it but it's normal so that's been a big struggle for me i try like i said i still struggle with it so i'm like i need to limit my instagram usage because that's a big part it's like oh what are they doing and when you're looking at, it's good to look at other people, but yeah. it's also good to come, like, not follow what they're doing, but set the trend yourself or set the standard yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's an ongoing struggle for myself and I'm pretty sure for a lot of people. I love your strategy. You said about, you know, limiting exposure to social media, et cetera, and just stop scrolling through other people's feeds and, you know, see what they're doing yeah. in comparison, uh, comparisons. I think that's a, that's a great strategy. If there is something that you could, um, you could give like some piece of advice that you could give a startup entrepreneur. What would you tell them? I think it's just going and pitching that first freelance client, going on Upwork, going on, reaching out to your friends and family. Maybe you don't feel ready, but just do it. Like you won't, you, you, you're never ready. Like the only reason I had a, like, I, cause I set a calendar. I was like February, I think it was like February 15th. I'm going to quit my job. And like, It was on my calendar and I just had to do it. And I started my business because I had no choice because I had already quit my job. So sometimes you have to, some people work well under pressure like that. Some people need more of a like, I need to make sure like I have like 20 clients lined up for the next six months. So depending on how you work, but make sure you just do, do it, do put into practice. Um, It's not going to be perfect. Like, I think that's another thing, trying to be perfect at everything 
back I didn't like I didn't feel ready to take on clients because I'm like I don't have my framework ready but it's like you don't know if your framework works if you don't put it into practice that is brilliant that is absolutely brilliant yes it's gonna come with time and tweaking things so that that would be my yeah yeah wow that is brilliant and also yeah the the fact that you said it's going to come with you know over time and it's it's an evolutionary process it doesn't like it and also about the perfection thing like it's not you have to practice definitely but don't wait for perfection don't wait for things to to be just perfect before you launch kind of thing i love that i think Mm -hmm. a lot of us suffer with that um and me too as well i think i still suffer with that it's always trying to make it as perfect as possible. But then I know better now that, you know, unless you fail, you really don't know what's not working and how you can make something better. So how can people, of course, I'm going to be linking everything in the show notes, but how can people find you, Jessica? I really want more people to find you because again, she's absolutely brilliant at what she does. I had a super, super fantastic experience with her. I cannot, you know, say enough. And uh, Mm -hmm. you should be working with, honestly, you know, us as entrepreneurs, we have so many things to worry about. If you can find a really, really good partner to to work with, whether it's web design, whether it's your branding, whether it's your coaching, whatever it is, you know, you need to find that really good partner. And so, yeah, how can people find you? Thank you so much. Yeah, so people can find me um, on my website, which is um, www.jnlmediaco.com. And then I'm also really active on Instagram. So it's just, my handle is at JNL Media Co. So those are the two places that I'm mainly on. And I blog, um, I'm go- going to blogging because I was blogging for 10 months straight. And so I'm starting that back up. So I blog on my website every week as well. Um, any topic related to Squarespace, branding, marketing, um, just web design in general. Yeah. So you guys can find me on those, those two places primarily. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. I really enjoy talking to you. And maybe in a few months or maybe a year or whatever down the line, I'll, uh, you know, I'll have you back and talk about how your business is thriving. I know it will. So, um, so thank you so much again. And for all the nuggets of wisdom that people can use um, when they're starting out, because it's so important to have that, uh, to listen to people who've been there and done that, you know, because we Mm -hmm. struggle. So um, yeah. thank you so much for that. And I will be linking all her social media, website, etc., in the show notes as well as on the video. So please connect with her. Let her know that you, uh, to, you watched the video and what value you took away from it. Let her know because, you know, it helps us to get feedback. So thank you again, Jessica. And I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you.